Hello YouTube and welcome back to Mize Bug. In this episode, we are going to start the cage to body tab. So this body is actually really strong um, until you start cutting it apart. So once you've cut this front end off and you cut the rear end out of it, it's actually quite rinkety and it wants to just flex and move all over the place. And even though we have a pretty rigid structure here, the body itself is not attached to that rigid structure. So if you drive it down the road like this, it's just gonna be bouncing around and rattling and banging against the cage and doing all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna have to uh, add some cage to body tabs. We're gonna put some probably right up here. We're gonna add like one or two up here. Um, one of the main issues we have is, and the reason I need to do this now, is I'm going to have the intercooler right here, and I'm going to have to cut out some of this portion here, and I don't want to do that until I have the body attached to the chassis fully, and that way it's not flexing and moving even more. So I'm going to put some attachment tabs, like, back in here, uh, up to the stronger parts of the body, and then I'm going to add some tabs all the way up here, uh, in the front end, and I need to make sure that I attach somewhere in here that's gonna strengthen up this door because whenever you open the door, it droops down uh, because this part of the body, it flexes really bad. And actually, I'll just show you guys real quick. Whenever you open the door up, um, it doesn't align anymore. So if I push up on this door to get it to line up, I'm at, you can actually see the body flexing. I'll have to strengthen this up and once the cage to body tabs are in, I'll have to make sure that this door closes properly because right now it is not right. So you have to kind of like lift up on the door and push it closed. Um, I'll also add some something from here to the original seatbelt bracket. So I already have bolt holes here and I know these are really strong. And then I'm kind of just going to add tabs wherever I feel like it needs it. So this video is kind of just going to be attaching the cage to the body in order to prep to put in my intercooler and I have to clearance some of this body out right here. So maybe the next video I'll be putting in the intercooler. Don't look at this. That's That's coming up. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I've added in six body tabs so far. I've got these ones back here that tie into the back section here. And then I've got two here. So just in the back side of the uh, B pillar. And then I've got two in front of the B pillar about halfway through the door. So right now I've got six connections in. In the front here is where I really wanna focus my time. So in order to keep this door from sagging every time it opens, I want to pick up uh, these points here, it's hard to see because everything's black, but there's three bolts here that attach the doors into the body. One of these bolts is not used, and that's the same on the top and the bottom. So there's one here, and then these three are used. So what I want to do is I want to pick up this spare bolt hole and then tie that into my chassis, and that'll help keep this door from flexing. If it still needs more reinforcement, then I'll keep adding until it's good enough. I gotta keep in mind though, as I'm designing this, that the body needs to be able to come on and off uh, in order to do what I wanna do later on. So these sections here need to be removable or not interfere with the body as it comes off. So let's get started on that now.
Okay, so what I have here, sorry the welder's on, but uh, what I have here is, is a half inch rod. Uh, it's 120 volt and it's got a 3 8 inch bolt on the one side. And then on the other side, I have a tab where I can pick up the door hinge. Um, there's another tab right here that's welded onto the frame I'll show you. And then as I tighten this bolt, it pulls the door in. This is the before. I'm going to show you guys the before. It just not lined up at all. Right? Like those are my marks. If the door is dropping, I don't know, half an inch or so. So I'm having a problem, it won't close. Now let me get these installed and I'll show you guys uh, how I tighten this up and then I can adjust the door. Okay, there it is installed. You can see whenever you tighten this nut over here, um, that's gonna pull down on this door, pull this door back, and that will lift this door up. To where, and I just keep tightening this nut until it's aligned and then I'll red lock tight that. Or I'll put a locking nut on here or something. Uh, that way it just stays or I'll double jam it. But yeah, let me tighten this up and uh, we'll, we'll adjust the door. All right, we got it adjusted. Let's check this out. So when you close the door now, we have the lines are lined up. So the door, you know, with a little bit, it's still an old door, so you still gotta kind of give it a slam, but it, it closes nice. Not bad, I'll take it. Um, I also noticed that whenever I was tightening this down, cause I actually did have to tighten this quite a bit, um, that it was flexing this tab over. So I added a gusset here to just reinforce that. But yeah, this thing's really nice now. I already did the other side. Um, all we have left to do is I need to make the cage to body tabs for right here. This cage to body tab, I was originally planning to do this and pick up that bolt there. And then I'd have two tabs with uh, 3 8 inch bolts here. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about this is if I took, in a violent rollover, if I took a big impact here, I could collapse this tube here, which is a critical part of my uh, roll cage structure safety. Um, so I don't really want to do that, even though it's it's not very likely to happen. Um, I, then I started thinking, well, if I spread this footprint out wider, it's less likely to collapse because I will be picking up closer to these tubes. Then I started thinking, well, what if I don't put anything strong enough to collapse any tubes? I want to firewall this B-pillar anyway, so I want to close out the front section from the back section. So I was like, okay, well, let's use carbon fiber here. If I ever took a side impact here, the, fi the carbon fiber would collapse and just break. And the carbon fiber would be strong enough to uh, keep this body secured and keep it from rattling around. So I'm going to start making a template here, and uh, I'm going to run it all the way from the roof all the way down to the floor tubes. And we're just going to put a big strip of carbon fiber in here. I have some already, but I need to make more because this is uh, too small. For now, I'm just going to make it out of paper, get the tabs in, and then I'll do the layups and get the carbon done. All right, so for mounting the carbon panels, I am going to be using these tabs. So there's just eighth inch tabs, and then I'm using 5 16 rib nuts, um, just with some cheap Amazon hardware. Um, it's kind of a cheap option on how to mount paneling uh, compared to like buying trick tabs like this. These are really nice for certain applications, but for just mounting 
uh, paneling, closed out paneling, I'm just gonna be using these simple tabs. And I got a hundred of these on Amazon for, uh, I think it was $25. Like I got tons of them. They're, they're, I just got them stacked up here. So uh, yeah, they're totally worth it. They're cheap, easy option. And I'll be using rib nuts also from Amazon. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick how to drill holes in carbon fiber without making it look like crap, uh, making really nice holes. The first thing you're going to want to do, you want to have a really nice step drill, something like this. Um, you're going to want to run it at high speed and low pressure for anything thick. But for what I'm doing here, uh, this first pilot here, this one's going to help out a lot with just getting it centered. And I'm going to run it slow at first. And then uh, as I start to punch through, I'm gonna slowly step up and I'll run it a little bit higher speed as I run up. And then when I get to my final hole, I'm gonna slow way down on the pressure so I don't blow through it. It's also really helpful if you put a flag on here so that way you know where to stop. Um, so I'll just show you guys a real quick demo in uh, real time. Uh, also, it's really important that you back your holes up. So like having a piece of wood in the backside, that way the fibers don't blow out as you punch through. Uh, is really helpful. So uh, you just want to get centered on your, your marks. Once you're centered on your mark, start real slow, get that hole started, and then you're pretty much clear to go. High speed, let it just fall through the carbon. Once you get to your hole, you're going to slow way down. Get that last thing through. All right. And you're going to have a really nice hole. You can come through the backside here and uh, clean it up if you want. <sighs> yeah, check that out. Those holes come out really nice. All right, well, let's just go over a recap now. We've got all of our cage to body tabs in for now. Um, I still have to finish up a couple over on this side over there, but we have our door adjustment tabs in. Um, I did add a couple of trick tabs on these top edges here. Um, I'll show you over here. We also have one on center line. I just got to weld that in. So I've got uh, one, two, three, and then four, another trick tab, and then five up here. So you can see, the, right now these are just bolted in with a nut, but um, I will add rib nuts here and put button head bolts in right here. Um, so we got those five, and then we have five on the bottom of the body on each side, five or six, I forget, so there's like 12 on the bottom. And then we've got our one on center above the door. So we've got those two. And then we've got the one just behind the B pillar. And then we have our carbon fiber that we're now using to attach our cage to body on the outside on the B pillar here. Um, I threw the seats in just to make sure um, everything was gonna look good. This whole entire thing is gonna be carbon fiber except for this center one. Um, this is probably gonna be polycarbonate so I could see through it. And then I'm thinking on the back side of everything on that B pillar, I'm gonna use this uh, aluminized fiberglass to kind of help with fire protection, um, but I'm gonna think about that a little bit more. And then all the way in the back here, we've got our tabs that uh, attach obviously to the back side here. This thing is whenever I shake the car, it uh, all moves together now, there's no rattling. So I'm pretty happy with that. If the, once I start driving it, if the body's moving around a lot, I'll probably tie in some more places, but I honestly think this is gonna work really well. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, but uh, I'm trying to get going really fast on this project. I wanna try to have it driving by next season. So um, we'll see about that and see how much time I can get put into this. So some of the videos might be a little bit hustled along or maybe I'm gonna skip some steps along the way. But yeah, it's getting really exciting. I'm really having a good time right now. Uh, I can't wait to like just, I don't know, I really wanna like start the engine, but uh, I think that's wasting my time just plumbing it all up just to start it whenever I'm going to pull it all back out anyway. I do need to get the engine cage built. I'm probably going to run over to James Ginsburg's shop and get the these tubes bent right here. My tubing bender has a 7 inch radius on it and I don't really like the way that looks. So um, I might run over to his shop and he's got a 4.5 inch bend radius that I can use. But everyone, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thank you for everyone who comments. It's really helpful. I like 
I like to hear what you guys have to say about this. So let's see what happens in the next video. I will catch you guys later and Merry Christmas.